let's look at two fundamental rules that generalize the rules that we've seen of the product rule and the bijection rule and begin with the product rule. So the generalized product rule would apply to an example like this. Suppose I want to count how many ways there are to line up five students in the class. Well, if we let S be the number of students and say that there's a session in which there are 91 students, um, then the number of lineups of five students, if I uh, did it in a mindless way applying the product rule, would be 91 to the fifth. But that's, of course, wrong because you can't have the same student in two places at once on the line. So in fact, when we line up the students, we're counting up a line of five different students among the 91. And that's what we need to count. So we really want the number of the sequences of length five from the set S of students, but with no repeats. Well, uh, how do I count that? Well, here's the logic behind it. Um, suppose that I'm going to try to list the five. How many ways are there to choose the first student in the list? Well, there's 91 students, so there's 91 choices. Now, how about the number of ways to choose the second student in the list? Well, the second student has to be different from the first. So whatever first one I chose, there are 90 choices for the second student. Now, what about the third student? Well, I've used up two students, and the third has to be different. So that leaves 89 student choices for the third, 88 for the fourth, 87 for the fifth. And the basic answer is um, 91 times 90 times 89 times 88 times 87. And a kind of convenient way to say this even more concisely in terms of factorial is it's the numbers from 1 to 91 multiplied, that's 91 factorial, divided by the numbers 1 to 86, which cancels out everything smaller than 87. So this is another way to say the same thing. It's just the product of n times n minus 1 down to n minus 5. OK. The generalization then uh, applies in a straightforward way to, if I'm interested in length k sequences. Um, uh, and the set Q of them, if there are n1 possible first elements and n2 possible second elements for each of the first entries, and for each of the first two entries is n3 possible third elements, then the total size of these length k sequences without repeats is simply uh, the product of n1, n2 through nk, and that is the generalized product rule. OK, so now we come to um, an equally fundamental rule, which is a generalization of the bijection rule. It's called the division rule. And the illustration of the division rule is, suppose that the number of, uh, I want to count the number of 6042 students. Well, a stupid way to do it, but it's informative, would be to count the total number of fingers of 6042 students and divide by 10. Uh, and that equality holds, assuming that um, uh, there's no polydactylism or amputations in the class. That is, we're assuming every student has, in fact, exactly 10 fingers. So the generalization of this is that abstractly, what we're talking about is a mapping from the set, uh, from a set A to a set B, which is k to 1. In the case of the fingers, we have a mapping from the set A of fingers to the set B of students, and that mapping is 10 to 1. There's 10 arrows coming in for every one arrow coming out. So in that case, what I can say is that the size of A, uh, the source of the k to 1 mapping, is going to be k times the size of B. Well, let's think about that in terms of arrows. That's the, bi the generalized bijection rule. If I have a function from A to B, that means that I have exactly one arrow out of every element of the set A, which means that the number of arrows is simply the size of A. If it's k to 1, what that means is that for every element of b, there are exactly k arrows coming in, k here, k here, k here. And then it becomes clear that the number of arrows is simply k times the size of b. And that's why the size of a, which is one way of counting the number of arrows, is equal to k times the size of b, which is the other way of counting the number of arrows. Let's apply it to this uh, very important example. Suppose I want to count the number of size 4 subsets, not sequences, of the set of 13 numbers, 1 through 13. Well, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 5, 3, 4, 7, 11, and so on. How many of these subsets of size 4 are there? Well, there's a nice trick for using the bijection rule that goes as follows. Let's let A be the number of permutations of 
the 13 numbers. Now, we know how to count those already. That's just the, the, the generalized product rule that says it's 13 factorial. So 13 factorial ways of listing the numbers 1 through 13 without repeats. OK, let's let B be the unknown for the moment set, uh, set of size 4 subsets. We want to count B. We do know how to count A. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to define a mapping from A to B, and I'm going to make it K to 1 for a useful K that I can figure out. And the mapping could hardly be simpler. Take this, sequ the, take this permutation of the elements of A, A1 through A13, call them. So these are the numbers 1 through 13 in some order or other, and simply map it by taking the first four elements and mapping it to the set of those first four elements. That's going to be a member of the set B of size 4 subsets. OK, well, let's figure out how many to 1 this mapping is. So we can ask ourselves, if I look at this particular um, uh, target set, A1, A1, A2, A3, A4, where else can that come from? Well, any permutation that has those same four elements first is going to hit uh, this set, because all we're doing is taking the first four elements of the sequence. And if the first four elements are the same, you're going to get the same set. Well, um, also, what else maps to the same set A1 through A4, A1 through A4? Well, I don't care the order in which the remaining elements occur. Um, they don't have to be in order 5, 6, 7, 8 through 13. They can be 13, who knows, 12, and end with 5. Any permutation of the remaining nine elements will also wind up having uh, hitting the same set because the first four elements haven't changed. So there's four factorial ways of getting the first four elements in, uh, in a permutation to hit the same set A1 through A4. And there's, thir there's nine factorial ways of permuting the last nine elements. And any permutation of the first four elements and the last nine elements is going to be a permutation that hits the same target. A1 through A4. And that's the only ways that we're going to be able to hit A1 through A4. So all of these map to the same sets. And what we figured out is that a given set, A1 through A4 is completely arbitrary, of course, is hit by 4 factorial times 9 factorial permutations. This mapping is 4 factorial times 9 factorial to 1. So that tells us that according to the division rule, 13 factorial, which is the size of A, is equal to that factor k, 4 factorial times 9 factorial times the size of B, which is what we wanted to know. B is the set of size 4 subsets. So the number of size 4 subsets is simply uh, 13 factorial divided by 4 factorial 9 factorial. That's the size of B. Now this number, 13 factorial over 4 factorial 9 factorial, is an example that comes up so often that there's a special notation for it. This notation of 13 factorial over 4 factorial 9 factorial has the shorthand 13 choose 4, which is the way we pronounce this. And uh, this is called a binomial coefficient. The general definition is that if I'm trying to choose m element subsets from a set of size n, then the number of those is n factorial over m factorial and the rest factorial and minus m factorial. It's by exactly the same reasoning as when uh, m was uh, 4 and n was 13. Uh, and this is called n choose m, which is the way that's pronounced. It's a binomial coefficient, and it comes up all the time. This is a very fundamental definition that you should remember.